Hey everyone, this is Lucas Fertitta again, Director of Acquisitions with Three Pillars Capital Group. We are joined by Tony Chavez, who works for Homestead Inspections. Uh, Tony performs physical and mechanical building inspections for commercial properties during the due diligence period. So, hey, Tony, thank you for sitting down with us today. Hey, Lucas, uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I always enjoy working with you guys and uh, definitely uh, looking forward to this conversation, you know, on the inspections and the properties. Uh, that yes, you guys, like uh, Well, good. Well, let's go ahead and start off with the first question. Tell us about your role at Homestead Inspections. Okay. Well, Homestead Inspections is a Texas-based inspection company. We perform state licensed real estate inspections on single and multifamily dwellings, as well as commercial properties, uh, retail and um, multifamily, of course. Um, I perform uh, the mechanical and structural inspections. Uh, mechanical includes the electrical, um, electrical, HVAC, plumbing systems, uh, appliances, the structural would include the foundation, the overall structure and the roof systems. And uh, we perform those uh, for the buyers um, to, so that we can uh, be able to advise them of what kind of defects, whether it's a defect from wear and tear or if it's a defect uh, from an installation issue, um, then we'll advise them of those, uh, the problems that they may uh, incur with those uh, items. No, very good. Okay. So let's say, how, I mean, inspections are, you know, very crucial in our business. Um, you know, so for you, how many do you average per week? Well, on a really good year, <laughs> it's, uh, you can't really judge it according to the week because we have uh, uh, basically feast or famine times like anything else in this industry. Um, there's a good uh, season of the year, but uh, on average, when we the market itself is um, where everything's moving and uh, people are buying and selling, um, I tend to average 250 inspections a year. 50 inspections. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, that's good. Um, all right, well then, uh, next question. Is there a unit range that you specialize in? Uh, when you say unit, uh, I assume you're regarding uh, the multifamily <laughs> dwellings and yeah, no, uh, there's not a specific range. You know, we've uh, done uh, duplexes, fourplexes, and all the way up uh, to uh, like with you guys, we did uh, three complexes in one day with you. Uh, so it really doesn't, uh, we, we don't try to keep in a range um, because it, uh, essentially all the structures um, are built, you know, to to minimum standard, and we are just uh, looking to find out uh, what issues those uh, building structures uh, have incurred over the years. You know, to advise on that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so earlier you kind of mentioned that you know you, when it comes to inspections, you do both you know residential and commercial. Uh, is there like a, I guess in a way of a breakdown of that, what kind of inspections do you offer? Is there like a set amount, or is it just unlimited? So there's different areas uh, that we do specialize in. I like to think that we specialize in as an inspection company. Aside from the standard structural and mechanical instructions, uh, we of course uh, can also perform pool inspections. We perform well and septic inspections. Um, as far as structures are concerned, uh, we do uh, inspect non-invasive uh, stucco and EPIS inspections as well. And um, Let's see. Oh, I, I like to think that we uh, are really uh, pretty good and maybe even specialized in moisture detection. And okay. that just comes from mostly a, a lot of years of experience and education and understanding um, construction and uh, overall structures and what uh, causes you know might occur when you have a certain situation. I see. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. I actually had no idea. Okay, well, I know, like, you know, you mentioned, and we've done a few deals together, and I know that, you know, most of our properties have been in Houston, but what other markets do you specialize in? Well, we pretty much go everywhere. You know, as a Texas uh, Real Estate Commission licensed inspector in the state of Texas, we can inspect any property, any real estate uh, property in the state of Texas. Um, farthest I've gone out, 
I mean, all the way from Galveston, and we're based in the Kingwood area ourselves. Uh, but, you know, I've traveled out to Galveston, to uh, Beaumont. Uh, we've, you know, Pasadena, of course, all those areas. Uh, I think uh, maybe Huntsville might be a little bit past Huntsville, maybe the furthest north I've gone. Then out, out west, you know, past Katy, uh, Polshear. We pretty much go wherever, uh, wherever the client uh, needs us. Okay, I mean, what's the farthest you've ever been? From from my location, I think probably might be Polshear. Yeah, might be Polshear, and drive, driving wise and time wise. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Good. All right. Well, then, uh, you know. You know, back to the, uh, you know, when it comes to inspecting a commercial property, you know, I'm curious to know what are the most crucial elements when you are walking the grounds for inspection day? Well, uh, of course, I'm going to inspect all those areas um, that I just explained. But in my mind, what I'm looking at, uh, in particular, multifamily dwellings, uh, I think the more crucial areas are going to be in your foundation. Okay. Uh, for your different buildings, because you have different issues with soil um, that can uh, affect the foundations. And then, of course, the older uh, a building is, then you begin to have issues where moisture penetration can occur, you know, which can damage the, uh, the framework of the structure itself, as well as impact the units that it affects. And, of course, um, uh, roofs, in particular, flat roofs. Uh, where we seem to find uh, a lot of issues with those and they're not properly being maintained. Um, the other areas like electrical, <clears throat> electrical, uh, typically you're always going to have some degree of electrical issues because you always have maintenance people who are making changes to the panel boxes and adding stuff on and everything. And a lot of times what we find is uh, the maintenance personnel don't really have a real understanding of uh, the electrical requirements and the codes. So they make those changes and then that affects something else. So usually when we do an inspection on those, um, you know, we find a lot of issues with those as well. Okay. Um, but as far as uh, cost, as far as cost, potential cost is concerned, I think you would um, have your main issues with the foundation, the roof, and then of course your um, plumbing system underground, okay, uh, which requires a master plumber license in order to scope those lines, which, you know, we do recommend, and in particular, whenever a uh, structure is 40 plus years old. Okay, yeah, that's very, very helpful. Okay, so um, code violations. I know that every year there's always a new code. I feel like all the properties that we've owned, it, it seems like every year something's different. So, what are the more common items that tend to be a code violation for multifamily properties? Yeah. Well, I, I thought about that question, and um, <clears throat> I think when we talk about code violations, um, you're really thinking about what is more observable, because not all areas of the structure are going to be observable to to any given person without actually doing more investigation. Like for instance, it's opening up the panel boxes, checking those. Um, but if somebody like a city inspector were to go on on the property, typically um, the first area that's going to be observable is going to be your your stair systems and your balconies. Okay. And funny enough, the uh, and, and I think we ran into this on your last property, but um, the the stair systems and the handrails and the guardrails on the balcony, there's a four inch requirement, okay, uh, for child safety so that uh, a child who's, or toddler, let's say, uh, whose head could possibly fit through a four inch space or greater, uh, they want that space between the spokes to be less, uh, at four inches or less. So a lot of these um, structures that was not a requirement when the structure was built. So you have a lot of the uh, handrails and guardrails that are space greater than four inches. And I always put it on the report, you know, of course, 
if you don't do it, you know, the, at the time where it becomes a problem is when the city inspector comes out to inspect the property. And if he writes it up, then the zone inspectors will require with permits to get those changed or to get the uh, four inch requirement in place, even though it wasn't required when the structure was built. So that seems to be the more, uh, in my mind, it seems to be the more prominent uh, observable code violation. Okay, yeah, actually that's, nails are on the head. I actually, yeah, that's one of the things that we, uh, we notice a lot of the stairwells. Okay. Um, now let's say that you know a buyer is doing an inspection. Um, what are the more common mistakes a buyer oversees when doing their own physical inspection? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, very common to have areas where uh, somebody who's looking to purchase a property because they don't have an understanding of construction or uh, construction methods and so forth. Um, I think uh, a lot of the um, areas where they uh, usually get their opinion wrong is when they're trying to figure out if the property has a foundation issue because most people will think that just because there's a crack in the brick veneer that that indicates that the foundation has a problem but that's that's not the only way to determine that and that's not the only way you should determine that and there's more investigation that should occur because all all buildings especially in this part of Texas are going to settle and you'll always have settlement that, that'll cause cracking in the brick veneer and cracking in the sheet rock. So you have to look at more more evidence. You have to gather more evidence um, in uh, the initial um, observation to determine if uh, if you actually have a foundation problem. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crucial, and foundation is always very important. Okay. So when it comes to your reports, how do you conduct them, and what is the average turnaround time for your clients? Okay, so our the template that I use for our reports are the same templates that the Texas Real Estate Commission requires us to use for residential homes. Now, when we do a uh, commercial property, whether it's multifamily or retail uh, location, um, we are not under a Texas Real Estate Commission guidelines. However, we do use the report because everything's outlined in that, um, and then we'll just um, uh, We'll just take that report and we'll uh, change it the way we need to in order to fit your specific needs into that uh, into that report. And usually, I can uh, turn that around in 24 to 48 hours. It depends on you know how much uh, how much uh, information I've uh, gathered from that inspection uh, that I need to put in the report. Okay. And we we of course uh, pictures in the report and everything, and try to give as much detail as possible. And then when I'm done with the report, I, I email it out to the client. Um, and pull. That's very good. Okay. So what can a buyer learn from you before purchasing their next property? Just in case if they don't want to hire an inspector, what are some tips that you can provide the audience? Um, <clears throat> I think on that, uh, let's see. I think on that, you know, as an inspector, we're inspecting for defective issues, um, but I have to remember that we're not the ones who are going to be able to provide you with the cost of repair, okay? But what we can provide you with is um, the information, you know, to determine if, if this is going to be a big issue or a small issue as far as what repairs are necessary, okay? Um, now, the cost, of course, will be determined by whatever contractor needs to come in and, and perform the repair. Um, so I think, uh, if anything, uh, if somebody were to follow me doing an inspection, and, and usually whenever I have a client following me, I like, to, I like to teach them myself, you know, because I believe that if you maintain uh, whatever structure it is and you know how to maintain it, then you'll have an easier time when it comes time to sell it, you know, whatever you want to do with it. But um, but if you were to follow me on a regular basis, then I think one of the areas that you would learn um, when uh, learn from me what you're able to um, look for in a property is probably going to be uh, on the structure and the foundation uh, primarily. 
because I will be able to explain to you what to look for um, for foundation areas. Or okay. issues. Yeah, it's definitely very helpful. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, in all these inspections, I think one of the, the questions I always like to ask inspectors is, what is the biggest surprise that you encountered while inspecting any sort of commercial property or even residential? You know, something that was something that you'll never forget. Well, um, since you mentioned residential, <laughs> you know, uh, most people believe that when it comes to a new construction property that you don't need an inspection. And we get that comment a lot. Uh, but I do have uh, one in particular um, new construction home uh, that was in the process of being completed and they were at their final uh, stage and so we were called in to inspect this property and so the builder um, was doing a new system in the Houston area it's called cocooning where the the whole house including the attic is sealed mm -hmm. When you do that type of system, the HVAC system is uh, cooling and heating the attic space as well. Okay. So uh, this particular builder, though, they had placed a water heater in the second floor closet. Okay. So it's a gas water heater. So you had a flue pipe. The flue pipe uh, was directed out through the attic space and then out the roof. Okay. So when I was inspecting it, and uh, went into that area to check the flue pipe and its connections, there was about a three inch gap where the flue pipe had been, become disconnected, okay? So in that type of situation, you would have uh, the flue, the combustion air, okay, from the water heater flue entering into the attic space where the air is being drawn in to the HVAC and then dispersed throughout the rest of the house, okay? So in that situation, if that had not been caught and they just allowed it to, to go and the new homeowners moved in, then as that water heater uh, would have been functioning, then you would have had CO um, poisoning in the gas in, in the house. Wow. Uh, that's one of the things I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's man, that's uh, no words, but you caught it, right? So. Yeah, it's very good. Yep, caught in a little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, it, uh, it was funny because that same year as they were doing this new system, uh, we recognized that after that, and they may have had other issues with similar uh, things with the gas uh, appliances, but they changed to electric water heaters after that. So they were no longer installing the gas water heaters. Ah, that's actually that's the first I've seen uh, or heard. I, I hear people usually talk about, you know, mold or something crazy that, you know, it's hard to repair, or, but that's, you know, on a different scale of seriousness. So thank you for sharing that story. Um, okay, well, that comes to the numbers. You know, I think at the end of the day, people always want to know what it costs to do inspection. Your residential is way smaller fee depending on the size of the home, but what is your typical so uh, cost for your service? And how do you, I guess, Calculated. Yeah. So when it comes to the commercial properties, uh, we charge uh, between 10 and 20 cents a square foot, uh, depending on the on the complex or the uh, property and stuff that we're inspecting. Sometimes uh, we may have to view the property in order to determine uh, what the best uh, best rate is on that. Um, you know, there's other variables. Uh, we have an office manager named Susan who takes care of all that for us. And of course, the, the owner of the company, Bill Mealy, um, he will make the final determination on, on what that rate's going to be. Um, but it, 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 it depends on you know the square footage and then a few other issues or areas that, uh, on how to determine that. Okay, very good. Well, we're almost wrapping up on our phone call today, I wanted to see, you know, you mentioned a lot of great things about, you know, the details and inspecting properties, the ups, the downs, the things, what to look for, but in overall, what, like, tell us the importance of hiring you. Okay. So, um, well, I think uh, one of the uh, benefits of hiring a third party inspector is going to be to um, alert you 
okay, to an area where you're not going to be able to see it or you're, you as a buyer are not permitted, you know, to enter into like, a, say, an electric panel box or, you know, you're not going to want to get up on the flat roof and so forth. Um, I, I know that uh, you can have the trades people out there, like, uh, for instance, on a, you know, for the plumber, you know, since the state of Texas requires a master plumber's license to scope the lines, you know, then you'll have them come out um, and do that. Of course, you know, they can be uh, very expensive to, to get that done. Um, you know, and any structure that's over 40 years old, we recommend that being done anyway. Uh, but stuff like a, a flat roof, you know, we can get up on that uh, to check for ponding areas, areas where you may have some water penetration uh, entering in. And stuff like that and opening up the uh, electric panel box to look at the uh, breakers and wiring and you know, look for aluminum wiring and so forth. And uh, we can alert you to that so that you will kind of get an idea of what, you, what is going to become your priority as far as getting the different trades out there to actually doing the repairs and the cost analysis and that. Very good. Very good. Well, I, I, I definitely learned a lot. Hopefully the audience learned a lot. Uh, now, one last thing. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or mention that would be useful for multifamily properties out there? Yeah. Um, I think uh, for multifamily operators, I, I think the big thing uh, for you guys would be in dealing with your different uh, city municipalities and your uh, city inspectors and I can say uh, that if you if you take whatever report or um, inspection that either an inspector or a tradesman gives you, and if you take care of that uh, initially, okay, on the property, and then from that point on, you just you know make sure you have a good maintenance crew to keep up the maintenance on it. And and when I say that, I mean like uh, make sure that they understand what they're doing with the electrical in particular. Um, you always have wear and tear on the property, but with the electrical, if it's if the electrical is done right, then it's going to continue to be right. In other words, it's not going to go bad, you know, just by itself. Okay, somebody has to go in there and make those changes that makes it wrong. Okay, um, as far as the wear and tear, as long as your maintenance guys are keeping up with the maintenance on those balconies, make sure if you have concrete balconies, um, the pads. Make sure you're sealing any cracks that occur, because if you don't seal the cracks, the water gets through, and then it starts deteriorating the solid panel underneath, and it gets to the joists and everything. Make sure that all your uh, stair systems are anchored properly to um, the balcony system, the point of attachments, and everything. If you're doing all that, you know, whenever the city inspectors always come out uh, every four years, depending on where you're at. But if they see a clean uh, complex on the outside, you know, they're not going to go into units. But if they see a clean uh, complex on the outside and everything's looking good, then they'll just, they'll just, you know, walk away and you won't see them for another four years. So it, it pays off to do some, uh, some regular maintenance on the properties um, so that you don't have to pay for, you know, the permit fees and, you know, you're, you're getting contractors out there to do a bunch of work all at one time and stuff like that. So I think that would be the biggest thing for you guys. Yeah, this is great, Tony. I really do appreciate the time. So that wraps it up. Uh, I appreciate you know you willing to get on this with me today. Uh, for all of our listeners out there, if you want to get in touch with Tony, his email address is published below. So thank you again, right. Tony. All right, not a problem, Lucas. You have a good day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.